Okay, so how do I install LuxCore for Blender? Go to the LuxCore download site. Download the latest version. It's the 2.1. It's a zip file. Don't click it. Once you've downloaded it, go to Blender. Go to Edit Preferences. Add-ons. Install from disk. Locate the zip file. Double click it. Now it's installing LuxCore. You can search for the Blend LuxCore add on here. I'm going to use the CUDA for NVIDIA rendering and I'm going to turn off the library. I'm also going to turn off the logs. Now close the preferences. And you can now select the LuxCore render engine. Let's check some basic settings. We're going to use the GPU as a compute device. I'm going to use more bounces. We're going to turn on the light tracing. Now let's turn on the denoiser. And in the caches, we're going to turn on the Photon GI cache. Then in devices, check your GPU devices, update list if necessary, and select your devices. Now LuxCore always needs the CPU because some calculations are always done on the CPU. I'm going to use a fixed amount of threads to prevent my CPU from overheating. Then in viewport render, I'm going to use the GPU with the light tracing, the denoiser as optics because it's faster for the viewport preview. And now you can turn on the viewport render preview, but be informed that the first time that you turn the rendering on, LuxCore needs to compile its kernels and it can take up to 30 minutes. That's perfectly normal. So just be patient. Now, if you wonder why we have a warning, that's simply because the material of the cube is not properly set. This simply means that we'll have to set proper materials for LuxCore. And now it's time to load the scene that you want to render. Let's make a render preview. We have light because as default, LuxCore has the sky turned on. We're going to load an HDR. Today I will be using the Bambanani Sunset from Polyheaven 8K AXR. And this is the light we get from the HDR. In LuxCore you can affect the tint, the gain, the exposure, the gamma and the z-axis rotation directly in the HDRI tab. I will leave it as it is for now. Time to go to shading and create the materials. Let's create a new material. As default, we're going to get a matte material, but that's not what we want here. We want a metal. So let's go to add material, metal, and connect it to material output. Don't forget to link the material to all the proper objects. Let's go to color and let's set our favorite gold color here. Obviously, let's set the roughness to almost zero. And now I will take the time to adapt the gamma and rotation of the HDRI to treat the reflections on the gold at once, like this. Now let's create the diamond material. Here we're going to use a glass material in the LuxCore manual about glass, dispersion and index of refraction. I'm just going to copy paste the numbers to get the correct result for the diamonds here in LuxCore. Sometimes life is as simple as this. Now I will create materials for the surrounding sand and rocks. The sand is a glossy material with multi-bounce and using the IOR to set the specular amount. IOR is pretty low, roughness is pretty high. Then I'm using the same image used for the displacement to affect the bump and the diffuse color using HSV and brightness contrast to tweak the color. The rocks also get a glossy material with the exactly same setup as the sand except using an other image texture. It's important to remember to give the objects a proper UV map. Here I'm using a simple cube projection on all the objects to ensure a proper mapping of the materials. Now it's time to add light sources. So let's go add light, area light. Let's place it back there. In render settings, sampling, advanced, light strategy, set it to power. Now go to the light settings, units, power. Tweak the light orientation, power and efficiency as needed. I gave this light a slight blue color using a rectangular shape. 
Now here in LuxCore, it's important to know that the scene will not always automatically update when you're in render preview. Go back to solid view and then again to render preview to see the updated changes. Now we're going to set up one of the most beautiful features in LuxCore, meaning the light tracing to create caustics. For that, we're going to use laser light and check the render settings. So to make it work, set a normal area light like I have down here and now make it a laser light. And we can see that now LuxCore is rendering caustics in the most beautiful way. Also check that in render settings, in light path, you have the light tracing turned on. Here, it's important to know that the caustics will be calculated on the CPU. The GPU can only calculate camera rays, as explained in this bubble. Then the glossiness threshold is very important. If your object is not glossy enough, it will not generate caustics depending the setting. So if your objects are not glossy, but you still want them to render caustics, you can turn the glossiness threshold up. Normally, it tends to be pretty low because normally only very glossy objects generate caustics. Also make sure that the laser lights are oriented in such a way that they will reflect the rays to the ground surfaces. Otherwise, you'll have no caustics to show for. The result is always so pretty that I started calling these rays angel rays a couple of years ago instead of simple caustics to make justice to their divine beauty. In render settings, there is an option that you can turn on the caustic light cache. It will render them faster, but make them a bit more blurry. Here, given your settings, LuxCore will indicate you how many light samples you will need to fully render the caustics. Given this number, 216 samples, I will set a halt condition for the render based on the light pass samples at 216 when the caustics will be fully calculated to avoid longer rendering times for useless samples. This render at 4K will take several minutes. Remember, high quality renders always take longer to calculate and that's perfectly normal. Let's save and be happy and run the render with F12 as usual. This is the result at 32 light samples after 12 minutes of render. And remember, this is a 4K render. I'm happy with this result and I'm going to save the image. In LuxCore, you can also set a depth of field using a focus object and an f-stop distance. Then you can have some bloom, a vignetting effect and color aberration to directly affect the render with certain compositing effects. Don't forget to save and be happy. Take care and see you soon.